Hello everybody and welcome to my build video for the Magicka Dragon Knight. Now please note I am going to make two Magicka DK builds if I'm fast enough. There is another build that I know works well. I changed from to this build and then I'm hoping to potentially change back. Both builds perform differently. So this build, the first build, is a perma block build and I mean truly perma block. A lot of people say different classes are perma blocking when in fact they're just blocking the big hits fairly often. No, this build you'll never ever let go of right click. I will sit in every fight like that. I will always be blocking. There is no time my block will go down in the fight. Well, not entirely true. If I'm out of position, I'll move to position so I've got something to move around and then block. But all of our survivability comes from this blocked mitigation. It's a lot of mitigation as a DK. I think it's 70% when you include the passives for blocking. And then we've got some heals coming in on top of that and our damage is going to eat through a group. So this is an AOE spec looking to burst down a group of people in a high tank position. There are two versions of the same build. I will explain the sets for both. The skill bar and the play style is identical for both. There's just a difference in the play style. The first is slightly more damage, slightly lower survivability. The second is practically unkillable, but is going to have less damage. Still enough damage against some targets, but it is notably less damage. I'm on that setup first. So the skills on the lower damage are as follows. Now the Magicka, I actually don't know what's going on here. That should be 33025. For some bizarre reason, when I left one keep, it dropped by 525 and neither me nor the stream has worked out what the fuck happened. So Lo and behold, it says 32 and a half. That's 33025 Magicka. Not that it makes a great deal of difference. Spell damage 2014 and Magicka recovery 1.2k. We're in heavy armor. This is again a pure tanky build to AoE groups down. 33k mag and 2k spell damage is enough. Yes. It's lower than some builds, but it's enough. Our max health 29k nearly and our max stam 16752. What's important about that is with four triglyphs and five two heavy, you're always going to have 14k stamina. I think it's 14056 rings a bell, but just over 14k stamina in no CP, which puts you in a nice spot. So I pretty much always do that now. Small pieces, magicka, big pieces, try. That does depend on the build slightly though. Our sets are as follows. Two Groftar. This is a nice AoE damage proc set hits very hard why not bloodspawn we're going to cover that in a sec groftar is hands down the best sustain set on a magicka dk and it's going to work out to be the best damage set on a magicka dk in aoe but by far the best sustain set for a magicka nightblade and i'll explain that our second set using exactly the same source of sustain is leeching the stats on this are horrendous. The five piece is not terrible. It actually does provide a decent amount of healing and hits pretty hard. But this set is the key to having true perma block in this patch because leeching is currently direct damage, which means that with a charged Destro, which we're about to show, we are guaranteed a status proc of poison. Groftar is direct fire damage. We are guaranteed a status effect of burning. And when we proc both of those, we get 500 Magicka and 500 Stamina back every single tick. If we have 10 people sitting in our Leeching and our Groftar, we get 500 Magicka per them every second guaranteed. It is an enormous amount of sustain from both sets and it's coming in while blocking. So you can block any size group. It does not matter how many people there are. A thousand people. You will not run out of Stamina unless it's all gone in one hit because Leeching will bring it all back and your Magicka is sustained by Groftar. It's a really cheeky way of using the sustained passive, though Leeching gets nerfed next patch, I believe. It doesn't matter too much because there is a new poison set coming out that will do exactly the same. Our final set in the lower damage version of the build is Hitty. This is gonna be on your front bar only. We've explained this on our Magplar build, but essentially it provides a really nice heal over time and it gives us some recovery, which we do sometimes lack in this play style. And then on top of that, we are getting a uh, magic bonus on the four pieces we want on the front bar. There's no point in fact barring this, plus you need leeching on both bars anyway. You really don't gain much. You could slot a willpower star from the front bar. Problem is, all your heals should be on the front bar as a DK, unless you're running a resto, but we're not. On the back bar, we're using a potentate ice staff. Again, charged. The reason you need to charge both bars is we want to make sure the status procs are coming in from whichever bar we're on. So if we're back bar buffing, then we need our status effects proc, get our magic and stamina back and carry on offense. But this is just to give us some mitigation. There's no point in backbarring Hitty. We're not gaining from the magicka 
and we've got no heels so it's not going to prop there it's got to be on the front bar okay so the big thing to note here is i obviously said we can have low sustain the reason that you still need some sustain is if we're caught in an awkward fight and i would describe an awkward fight as a 1v1 versus a very kitey build or a 1v2 slash 3 where you're taking decent pressure and having to heal in both those situations we've not got enough targets to consistently sustain from Grothdar alone so the hitty sustain can make a difference this is the tankiest setup now the higher damage setup is using elf bane as follows this will take me a sec to set up and i have just realized guys that the entire time i was using light Grothdar and i should have been in heavy in that setup if you use the hitty setup you should be in five heavy two light light slash light gloves that explains why I kept fucking lacking healing. Ah, oh, that makes sense. That explains where the magical went. <laughs> okay then, that should be too heavy. That should be heavy, heavy, heavy. In the leeching setup, uh, sorry, in the high damage setup, now we run light. We run light here and our five heavy come here because our second set is elf bane and elf bane only comes in heavy. So we bang these pieces on. Your mix of sturdy and impen is kind of up to you, but to be honest, you can get away with full impen quite comfortably. Uh, we then slot a leeching staff on the front. You could slot an elf bane as long as you're double barring both sets. That's really important. I've got to find the rest of my elf bane now, which is kind of unfortunate. I think it's the boots. What a fail. It's the, okay, it's the legs. There we go, five, five. So this setup went up to 34K Magicka and 2.3K spell damage. Our health goes higher, stamina the same. But what's so nice about this setup is although our regen now plummets to 750, Elfbane doubles the duration of Groftar. So we're again increasing the amount of magic return we get from these status effects. More than enough to sustain in almost any fight. It's a very nice sustain. The only issue you can have now using Elfbane is you no longer have a healer over time, which means that you're going to take pretty high pressure in blocks still if you get zoned down, and then you're vulnerable to simply getting killed through your block by a large group. There are ways to get around that, most notably is to nuke, but another really good way is to use corrosive armor if you do like that on the back bar, because we get an increased duration of that as well, to 18 seconds. That is a long time of being immortal, essentially. So that is another way around it. Would I use it in this setup? Nope, because there's even better, which is Banner. Increased duration on that makes it a 34 second movable defile ultimate with good damage. So strong. But we'll move on to the skills now. We've explained both setups. Obviously, which you use comes down to your preference. Try them briefly in next patch because I'm not 100% sure how they change too much. Front bar skills are draw essence. Sadly, this is a mandatory skill on any AoE tank tanky setup you have to have it because otherwise your healing is poor dk healing is not the best and you need this aoe heal when you get piled down dragon blood is not going to cut it but it's also really nice pressure and if you get enough targets on you it's essentially free because you get a magic return based on each target hit so against large groups this will fully sustain you even without anything else your whip then is going to be your main spammable our tool tip sitting at 8.1k unbuffed it pushes up to 8.8 to 9k buffed I'm not going to bother getting that. You get the idea. Um, in the other setup, it's going to be 8.6k, so 200 less in the Hitty setup. Now, I prefer Flames of Oblivion in this patch. I did use Cauterize last patch, even though I obviously wasn't making YouTube videos at that point. Um, you could use either. Cauterize alone is pretty good, and if you do use that, it does make this build notably more survivable. I really like Flames of Oblivion. I do think it gives DK a lot more kill potential. It can be pretty difficult to kill without it. Um, yeah, I, I think that's really good. But the reason I've gone Flames for Vivian this patch is it got buffed to hit two enemies rather than one, which also makes it solid AoE damage. Going to be one of your highest damage returns in any battleground, for example. Now, it's worth noting here that my whip morph is the healing morph. We're running a tanky setup. You should not run the lash morph. Sorry, you should not run the other morph. Molten whip. You want the heal, you need heal over times coming in to keep yourself alive while tanking these groups and AoEing them down. Your burst heal is coagulating blood. The tool tip on there is fine, does the job, but it's not that great a heal. It's pretty vulnerable when you get to file down. I really dislike this heal. I would do anything to take off my bar, but it is what it is, it's what you've got. Entropy for major sorcery, not much other reason. You've got enough dots, so if you do get dodged on the entropy, you'll still get sorcery. Don't bother with the recast. And then Leap is our front bar ulti. Now, sadly, you can't go with Magna Shell and uh, Banner too easily. 
it's possible, but probably not worth it in this much spell damage. And the reason for that is you need a burst ulti against Sorks. Against any other target, you can kill them with Banner alone, and I use this most of the time as my aggressive ulti, if I can afford it. Because obviously I've got to save up the ult. Our back bar then is Ember's nice dot. It's rare to have useful dots this patch, but fortunately DK has them, and it's got a decent heal. It's not as good as it used to be, and it is droppable if you do have a preference skill. This is the most flexible skill you have. I would not change any other skill. Fossilize is your stun and gives a stamina return from the Urban Heart passives. Elemental Drain should be on your back bar. That is going to give you your magic and sustain extra, but more importantly, it's going to give you pen, which we're going to lack in heavy. And then Engulfing Flames to buff our fire damage and to increase our uh, dot damage, sorry. And then Volatile for our resistances and another dot. And then, as I've said, Banner is our back bar ulti. Now, it is important to note here that if you do replace Embers, you can lack damage in terms of dots. So I would advise replacing it with a dot-based skill. For example, you could use Flame Morph of Talons if you like that. Uh, you could use a Destro skill. Ice Blockade is pretty good. Those are the sort of skills you're going for. But if you truly are not alone, you could go for Cinder Storm, and that is a very big heal over time still. It's extremely expensive, though, so you have to use it after your Potion Passive in the CP. It's not terrible if you use it then, otherwise you wouldn't touch it with a barge bolt. But it's up to you. I believe this skill bar is best, but if you do prefer another one, feel free to go for it. It's worth noting our potion as well. This is not a typical tripod, though if that is all you can afford, go for it. Now my magic is fixed. I don't know what's going on. No, I've lost another 500 in the other setup. What is going on today? That has gone down again. Is it going on my back bar? Yeah, okay, my entropy is scuffed. That's where the magic is going. What a stupid game. Um... Now I know what the magic is doing. Entropy is bugged and it's giving me the stats on the back bar. That explains why I've lost 600 Magicka. Our Tripot is not a normal Tripot. Magicka, Stamina, and then grants you Minor Heroism, restoring one ultimate every 1.5 seconds for 47.6 seconds. So good, so useful, cannot advise it enough. This is really useful because you're getting your ulti faster. Banner with the Combustion Passive, again, is a useful source of sustain even though it's not direct damage because you're going to get a lot of people in there but it's also increasing your offense time significantly on your ulti would i use it elsewhere if probably not it can be good but the health is not as bad as you'd think and we are a decent health recovery since we're non-vamp with the tri food so the minor, minor endurance is pretty good but yeah it's pretty i don't know i believe this is the pot to go for and our food is a tri food gold version our mundus is the apprentice you want this over the mage <laughs> reason for this is engulfing flames scales off your spell damage the amount of extra damage it gives so buffed we reach our 10 percent by having the apprentice thus we need the apprentice and we are a high elf as a race again this sources us a blocked stamina source uh stamina regen every little bit counts it does make a difference it's valuable to have our resistances are fairly high they're not exceptional it doesn't matter too much because we're mitigating through block so much so 21k and 25k our crit very low we're only sourcing that from our um engulfing flames that's the only source of that final bit to mention i believe is the cp our cp is as follows one in siphoner 72 in water for break free one to prevent purging for the way six in bashing to interrupt 64 in arcanist for magic and sustain this is mostly because there's no other really good point dump six in befoul this is to increase the defile anymore waste of time it's not a very efficient tree these days 40 for roll dodge 81 for blocking this is where most of your points are going to go this is your main source why not stack it up Though you do not necessarily need this, I can fully perma block in no CP as well in this setup. So in the end, does it matter too much? No, it's not the end of the world. You can perma block without it, but it might as well have it. It's the most useful bit in the green tree. Blue tree, quite a widespread. 27 in blessed for more healing. 28 in elfborn. We don't need to go too high. Our crit is low, so it's not such a big deal. We're better off stacking the other sources with such a low crit. Thus, we go 56 in Elemental Expert, 50 in Erosion. This is mostly to pretty the tooltip. You're actually going to have more efficiency running 49 Elemental Expert and putting the rest in pen. It's slightly more overall damage. I just like the look of the 8108. I don't know why. 81 in Master Arms for Direct. Again, you could move 7 points of that into pen for slightly more efficiency. And 7 in Pharmaturge. It is worth running the dots since we have a decent amount of dot damage. Last but not least, Red Tree. We have to unlock the Reinforced Passives. We go 66 in Ironclad. You don't need to go any higher. 
because we are blocking all the time. There are some direct damage sources now that go through block, which is one of the reasons I'll be returning to my old build. 54 in resistance for crit resist gets us the rest of the points for reinforced and gives us more crit resist. 34 in Fixed Skinned, 43 in Hardy, and 43 in Elements Defender. Unchained does not matter, but we get there anyway. 3 in Elements Defender, 27 in Quick Recovery. Gives us the 30 passive, which is not bad in Duo. Um, but both of these trees are worth having these numbers anyway, so you might as well go for it. And that, I believe, is everything. But I could be talking at my ass. I'm sure I missed something I normally do. Anyway, I hope this build will be useful for you. I have covered pretty much everything now. Try each version of the build if you wish. Next patch, there are ways to adapt this, which is why I've chosen to still release this, even though this build will not necessarily be viable next patch. Um, you'll have to replace leeching with another poison source, but hopefully this gives you an idea of what I've played this patch and also gives you an idea of how we can use the combustion passive more effectively, which should help some of you play. Good luck with the build. Leeching can be a pain, but you can get it for trophies. It's not the end of the world to do. I hope it works out for you, and I will see you in another video.